is there anything better in League of Legends than a level one invade? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, it's not exactly so nice when you are invading 5v3 and you're losing at that point. And then the enemy team has two extra teammates come join in the fray and you're thinking, oh shit, whose idea was this? Um, that being said, Cassante lands a really nice Q3 here that knocks Draven back into us. Allows us to trade back one for one, so it's overall like not that bad. But the Yone and the Kled here, just they just keep going in. They, they just keep going in, even though they like kind of technically like win this fight. And this allows me to just go on this e or on the Nico here, split up their team, and then we just pick them apart apart one by one as the, they like the enemy team is just basically just trying to save each other over and over again even though they've lost at this point and we end up securing five kills to start off the game not a bad start honestly so what do we do with those five kills well i mean we do a lot of good things with it including this chase down on the Kled. Now, my Cassante did get solo killed, so that's not good. But if you are a fan of Warwick, a true fan of Warwick, you're going to love watching me chase this man across the map with bazillion movement speed and killing this Kled in a matter of like 10 seconds. The snowball continued until the point where I'm 405 versus this Yoni in the side lane, just kind of trying to split push and get some damage on the turrets. Um, I kind of, well, I definitely kind of troll this by allowing myself to get comboed in the turret, but I'm able to loop back around and kill this Yoni, even though I'm super low HP, because I know I have the flank angle, and my ultimate is going to lifesteal me, like, back to full health. Plus, my damage is super high at that point. Overall, this game, I'm just, like, playing out of my mind. I will, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, everything I did was correct, even, for, like, not even just, like, the decision-making or my mechanics, but also just the simple things, like, my jungle clear was just super fast, and... I was very proactive on the map and just had like a, I felt like I was just completely on it. I was in it to win it and I just continued to just dominate in 1v9 the early mid game and just kind of put it in a position where it's basically unlosable for us. I mean, it is pretty much unlosable at this point. I will say I'm the only person on my team that's fed and everyone else on my team, well, they're they're, they're doing just okay. But the enemy Eve just managed to pick up a bunch of kills. She's, she's actually starting to snowball quite a bit. And you know, like Eve, she's a champion that doesn't like really take over games a ton, at least in team fights. But if if people start to, you know, stop to group and like they start to like, try to like split push the side lanes and like things get a little unorganized, then she can definitely just completely swing games around in her favor. That being said, I'm dominating hard. I do get kind of caught out here and give my bounty over to the Nico support, but I'm not too worried because that's yeah, Nico support. Not really a massive threat. But a little bit later on, um, I'm split pushing the top side like 30 seconds before Dragon spawns, which is a decision that I kind of regret, honestly, just because there's not really a ton of benefit for just pushing in an extra wave in this type of situation. We'd rather just make it to the dragon well ahead of time. Now, granted, I, I, I do still do not think that there is like any chance of the enemy team taking dragon before we get there. I wasn't worried about that, but my teammates, as you can see right here, they tried to contest the dragon before I even got there. And that resulted in, well, everyone dying and us losing the dragon. So that was kind of a throw. And following it up here, this Eve, by the way, is super, super fed. She's gotten a lot, a lot of the kills. So I just try to erase her in the fights. Um, right here, maybe I actually like actually dive a little bit too deep. I mean, I still managed to, you know, do a lot of work here. But, you know, like I said, I am pretty much like the entire team. Um, and it does work out overall here. We're able to get four kills off of this Baron bait, which is nice. And we're kind of just able to recover. Yoni is, is split pushes on the sideline, which is annoying. But yeah, like I, one of the reoccurring themes in this game that made it really annoying is that I'm very, very fed. And I'm kind of like any time, any second that I leave, my teammates just immediately just decide to just go fight and do something that's, you know, do something without me. And that puts us at a lot higher chance of, of throwing here. For a couple of fights, this does end up overall working. Like the last few fights, we were able to put in a lot of work. Um, we're able to actually push in and maybe threaten a, a win here. I actually had a pretty bad foresight here. I, I thought that we could just end, but I didn't like... For some reason, I just thought that the spawn timers were higher for the enemy team. So we do kind of overstay. But luckily, we are able to make it out alive. And when we're moving towards this dragon, we realize that, you know, we can make a pick on the enemy team if they try to contest. So that's what we do. We just decide to bush camp here, which I think is the right decision because there's not really like much of a, uh, like this isn't like for soul or anything. So we might as well just try to make a couple of picks while the enemy team feels pressured to get this dragon. And then that can lead to us getting the dragon and then getting the Baron, which can set up a game winning push from our side. 
However, I did not account for this Eve. I had no clue where that Eve came from, by the way. I like, I just completely like forgot about her. And then just kind of like as a little spoiler for this game, we were down, we're down three dragons to zero now at this point, just because she stole that, which makes things a little bit awkward. And they're now in soul points, even though we've been stomping them the entire game. And somehow the enemy team, like, as you can see, I chased the Eve into our base to get it, get the kill after that dragon steal. But the enemy team was, was doing this Baron. They got really, they just got way, way too close to finishing that for, for my comfort. I think it was the right decision for me to chase down the Eve because she was the main threat of the enemy team and she's the jungler. We are able to, you know, to, to pull them off. I get a really, really smooth Q follow on this Kled. And that allows us to just turn on the Baron here. I'm kind of have a little bit of PTSD from Eve going for that steal last time. So I just say, you know, fuck you Eve. And I just alt her and just kind of get that out of the way. Um, we get the Baron. I'm going to push in the top side here just because uh, we have tier two turret is worth a ton of gold and I'm super fed so I can just handle multiple people here. Um, however, the, like, you know, there's a limit. There's a limit to how many people I can handle. And right here, I actually kind of end up overextending for this Kled um, with my GA up, by the way. So not only do I die here, I don't have GA for the next fight, which seems like not really a big deal considering the state of the game, but my team for whatever reason, they keep they siege without me. Now I should be spamping here. This this is a mistake in my end. I should be pinging them out. Um, I had a little bit more confidence than I should have had my team, but I have like I have 20 kills. I'm the other the entire team, and they're they're going in 4v5 on this siege, and they give away like yeah they get aced. They just get straight up get aced here. We, we get it. We get a Nico kill in return, and now the game starts to get a little bit sketchy. We are able to kind of regroup here. I'm able to make a really nice flank here. By the way, I got Stridebreaker as my last item and the value for a last item Stridebreaker was huge here. Now, it's, you're not gonna be able to do this next patch with uh, Titanic Hydra, but I will say that Stridebreaker is a last item. I think actually makes a lot of sense in Warwick currently, um, just because it allows you to maneuver, uh, you know, go kind of in and out team fights a little bit. And this sets up the Elder Dragon. Now, the enemy team, they have the soul at this point, which is a big problem. But all we got to do is just zone off this Eve. We just got to zone her off and stop hitting the Elder Dragon. And everyone just keeps hitting the Elder Dragon. Now, I did miss my ultimate. I, I, I get that. But, like, I'm not going to win the smite fight there. I have to just try to go for the ultimate, which I, I, really, I think the, the only thing is that I could have done there is I really could have just probably um, gotten off a lot sooner and prioritize hunting for the Eve. I just, I did not expect my entire team to just go for that flip. I was, we were going to lose that. But now the enemy team, they have Elder Dragon. They have a bunch of shutdowns. And out of nowhere, I'm 21 and seven, we lose the game. Minus 14 LP. I have no clue what happened that game. Well, I do, I do have an idea. Now I played very, very good. I played overall a very, very good game, but I did make some mistakes. I didn't, you know, account for Eve for a couple dragons. Gave away, we gave away two dragons to Eve because I just didn't smite it in time. Actually, I think we gave, gave away three, which was very, very poor on my end. I got caught in the top lane after the Baron lost my GA. I also was late to that dragon fight that was crucial to the team. And really, at the end of the day, once again, I did not ping and communicate enough with my team, which is a recurring issue that really prevents me from, you know, influencing the game. So the lesson learned there is that even when I when I feel like I'm playing perfect, there's still clear lessons to be learned, especially when I review the VOD. Now, the next couple of games is essentially just going to be like a speed run, I guess, of all of my like next few games that came after this. Some of them wins, some of them losses. I just want to highlight like the kind of the key plays that occurred in these games. So please let me know what you think of this style as it allows me to play more games in every, every single video. However, I'm not going to be going at quite as in depth. Depth. I think that like, you know, if games are kind of more one sided, this would be fine to go for. But yeah, just keep me posted what you guys think. Now, in this game right here, basically, long story short, Master Yi versus Draven. That's the entirety of this game. Our, the Master Yi got really, really fed. I actually like kind of entered multiple times over aggression, played way too greedy and just reckless at times. This got Master Yi super fed and he just started snowballing. However, I did manage to make a couple comebacks here. I got a double kill on the top side, and then I actually followed this up, this up with a really nice invade in this, this Master Yi. And even though he's way stronger than me, I was able to solo kill him because I waited for him to Alpha Strike in the Krugs, which allowed me to, you know, 
flank him and deal enough damage to him that he couldn't really fight back. Um, and then fast forward a little bit, we have a team fight that we were able to win after a dragon, which really just kind of solidifies our Draven getting super, super fed. So even though this game was actually a kind of a one-sided stomp against us early on, we were able to really pull it back by pretty much just slowing down the Master Yi. I mean, we saw that our, our ADC was getting fed, getting kills on repeat. So all we need to do on the top side is just, you know, chill out a little bit and take more calculated fights. We actually managed to kill the Master Yi a couple times. This results in the Draven carry outweighing the Master Yi carry. We gain LP, we get the win. Now the ensuing game, you can see we have this little fight at the Grubs, which you can very clearly see is not gonna work. And even in this moment, I was thinking, this is so stupid, why am I going for this? I still went for it and I still regret it. We had like two people that were low HP, and uh, we just don't skirmish quite as well. And then, yeah, like basically this was another case of just over aggression, over forcing plays and not playing patiently. Our team scales very, very well. And we didn't really play like it. We played like we really needed to force. And it's kind of especially bad because I'm against a team comp that really is very difficult to play against this Warwick. That might be partially why I forced it though, to be completely honest. I think when I when I play against team comps that kind of scare me a little bit, I feel like I have to get fed early on in order to do anything. But like, yeah, like our team comp is very, very strong. I just have to re recognize that I'm not the 1v5 carry. And um, instead we just end up getting kind of rolled against a team that we can't really fight back against. And now we're Diamond 2, NLP, like we're not really making any progress here, guys, and we're actually nearly 50% win rate. So you'll notice that I'm getting ahead in a lot of my games, not the last game, but most of my games I'm getting ahead and I'm throwing. That's kind of the issue that I'm going to have to fix. There's going to be, I'll have to be a lot more focus in the mid to late game, a lot more patience in the early game. And those are the key elements that I'm going to have to work on. If I expect to get to challenger, hell, if I expect to get to grandmaster or master, if you like this video, click on this button. If you didn't click on this one, thanks so much for watching guys and peace out.